This week, the twice daily lamb sacrifice was practiced for the Temple Mount services. On the 17th of Tammuz, one of the darkest days in the history of the temple, priests from the Temple Institute practiced the twice daily sacrifice. This is the most important of all Jewish sacrifices because it is the one that the Antichrist takes away at the abomination of desolation. Why did they choose this dark day? And how close are we to the beginning of these sacrifices? That's what we're talking about today. And we're starting right now. While the rest of the nation of Israel fasted on the 17th of Tammuz, also known as the fast of the fourth month, a group of Jewish priests gathered in Jericho for a dry run of the Korban Tamid, the twice daily sacrifice performed that someday will be performed on the Temple Mount. This is the same sacrifice prescribed by God in Numbers. You shall offer one lamb in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. And the same one that Daniel the prophet tells us will be stopped by the Antichrist in Daniel 8.12, Daniel 9.27, and Daniel 11.31. Now, although Christians seem to focus on the Passover sacrifices, it's actually these twice daily sacrifices that are more important prophetically. If the Antichrist is going to stop them, they must first begin. I mean, that's just logical. This makes the start of a twice daily offerings, therefore, one of the greatest signs of the end times. But why did these priests choose the 17th of Tammuz, one of the darkest days in Jewish history? And why this year? Why 2021? The 17th of Tammuz commemorates the day the Roman legions breached the walls of Jerusalem before they destroyed Herod's temple in AD 70. It's also the day that Moses came down Mount Sinai and discovered the Israelites worshiping the golden calf. Enraged, he destroyed the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And it is also the day the twice daily sacrifice stopped during the Babylonian invasion under Nebuchadnezzar. So this is a very dark day, one observed by fasting and prayer throughout Israel. This fast in Tammuz, the fourth month of the Hebrew calendar, is mentioned by the prophet Zechariah, who prophesied that one day, after the return of Messiah, it will change from a day of mourning into a day of dancing. Then the word of the Lord of armies came to me, saying, The Lord of armies says this, The fast of the fourth, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth months will become joy, jubilation, and cheerful festivals for the house of Judah. So because the 17th of Tammuz was a day when the twice daily offering ended in the past, and because it will become a day of celebration in the future, the Temple Institute priest indicated that this is why they chose this day to perform a reenactment of the Korban Tamid service. A full-size altar was erected, and a wooden model of the golden altar used for incense was also erected. The event was held late in the afternoon, close to sunset, when the evening daily sacrifice was prescribed by God to be performed. A bigger question, however, might be, why this year? Why the 17th of Tammuz in 2021? This is the second practice sacrifice this year. A Passover sacrifice was performed in the spring. The Temple Institute priests obviously think the time for starting the sacrifices is getting very near. And many of the members of our community are saying they think this may be the year that the 70th week of Daniel begins. I'm hearing this all the time in emails and comments that you guys are leaving. Our ministry is not willing to take a position on this one way or the other right now other than to say that if the 70th week begins this year in 2021, 
It ends in 2028, which is a year that many are considering. So although we aren't willing to say that this is the year, we think watching for the start of the 70th week is definitely in order. And if the tribulation period was to begin later this year, it might begin with the initiation of a twice daily sacrifices. It just might. Historically, when the Jews returned from exile in Babylon and restarted the twice daily sacrifices in the past, it was at the beginning of the seventh month on Rosh Hashanah. Now when the seventh month came and the sons of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one person to Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brothers, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil, and his brothers rose up and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. So might Israel begin sacrifices this fall on the Temple Mount. Rosh Hashanah begins in the evening of the Gregorian date, September 6th. This is a day to watch for. We are emphatically not saying that the sacrifices will begin then, but there is a chance that they will. As we described in previous articles, the Jewish leaders do not think a third temple or a red heifer are required to bring these twice daily offerings. But since King David established the altar on the Temple Mount, Jews believe they may only bring actual sacrifices at that site. That is the one thing absolutely required. If you would like to see one of these previous articles, click in the upper right corner. And all that is needed for them to be able to roll their portable altar to that site of the Temple Mount, which they already know, and have their trained priests perform the sacrifices, all that's needed is approval from the Prime Minister of Israel. And now that Israel has a new Prime Minister, Neftali Bennett, someone who has said he wants a temple built and sacrifices to begin, well, maybe, just maybe, it will happen. A question we always get when we do these kind of videos is, aren't these sacrifices blasphemous and non-biblical? In this video, we have the chance to actually give the Jewish perspective on this first, then we'll give our opinion. Rabbi Mordecai Persouf, the head of the Midrash Educational Center, helped organize this event, and he tried to explain why these animal sacrifices have to take place. It is quite sad, in our opinion, as the rabbis completely miss the real meaning of a sacrificial system, which was as a prelude to the once and for all sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Let's see what the rabbi has to say, however. Quote, when a man sins, it is his animalistic soul pulling him. Rabbi Persoff said, when a Jew brings a sin offering, he places his hands on the animal's head and presses down. Through the sacrifices, we acknowledge our animal nature, but we also demonstrate our intention to overcome this animal nature to show that we are in charge of dedicating our entire self to the service of God. This shows the mistaken nature of Judaism's work-based system. Listen to that quote again. We also demonstrate our intention to overcome this animal nature rather than Jesus overcoming it as in Christianity. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of the defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So those thinking that these sacrifices are blasphemous are right, they are. They ignore the free gift of Jesus' righteousness given through his sacrifice and attempt to achieve that righteousness through their own efforts. They also miss the place these sacrifices are going to play in the end times. Josh Wander, 
A correspondent for Israel 365 News noted that throughout the total of 830 years that the two temples stood, the ritual of a Talmud sacrifice was only interrupted twice, that when the temples were destroyed. Quote, there is a tradition from Rabbi Elijah ben Solomon Zalman, an 18th century Torah scholar also known as Vilna Gaon, that after the temple service will be restored and restarted the third time, it will never be interrupted again. End of quote. This ministry believes our Jewish friends probably need to read the book of Daniel. But that is a problem. 20 years ago, I led a Jewish friend through the book of Daniel in a Bible study. When we reached the ninth chapter, he saw the prophecy of the 70 weeks and he exclaimed, the Messiah, he must already have come. And I assured him that he had come and his name is Yeshua. My Jewish friend took this passage to his rabbi and received this very sad explanation. The rabbi told him that the book of Daniel is sealed until the end times. That is true, by the way. And that is why Jews in his synagogue are forbidden to read it. That close to scripture that could lead to salvation, yet forbidden in that synagogue from reading it. Now you aren't forbidden from reading it and neither was Yeshua. Daniel was Jesus's main text when he wanted to speak of the end times. In fact, in Matthew 24, 15, he commanded that the reader understand a certain passage in Daniel. What was that text that Jesus commanded all of us to understand? And what does it mean? Click right here to keep watching and learn the passage that Jesus based much of his end time teaching on. Till then, this is Nelson. And I'll see you there.